Ladies and gentlemen on the Troy Gaming Tentacom video, we're going to be discussing AMD publishing patents for Zen-based APUs. Now these APUs have integrated FPGAs, we'll get into what those are in just a moment, as well as high bandwidth memory 2 on a 2.5D interposer. You might recall that we actually discussed this just a couple of days ago in more depth uh, concerning various rumours and those rumours indicate that supposedly anyway we'll be seeing these APUs up to 32 Zen cores on an APU and it will indeed feature Greenland GPUs as well however as I said a patent has appeared which is rather interesting because it's kind of giving you an indication where AMD are going to be going with this now FPGA stands for field programmable programmable excuse me date gate arrays anyway it's getting kind of late here apologies Anyway, what this basically means is that you have the reconfigurable logic, which means that you can easily program the chips to perform very specific functions in hardware. FPGA is basically a piece of programmable logic, and it was actually dates back to the mid-80s, so it is kind of uh, established. Now an ASIC, also known as ASIC, generally have hardwired logic so basically it's for a specific task a specific function fpga however is left more to the vendor themselves so let's assume that uh, a network router was being used uh, as an example well maybe you want to tailor that processor specifically for that application and they are often used in high performance computing solutions, for example, servers, supercomputing, uh, supercomputers, uh, data mining, that type of stuff. But it also extends to other situations as well, for example, radio, DSPs, which stands for Dig Digital Signal Processing, and all of this other stuff will oftentimes utilize FPGAs. So what the hell are AMD using this for? Well, it's most likely that this technology is going to be used for servers, and we'll go into that in just a moment. Now, as we've discussed, AMD are really pushing high bandwidth memory too. As some of you might recall, they actually have kind of an exclusive on HBM2, um, which obviously isn't best pleasing for NVIDIA. Basically, the story in a nutshell is that AMD helped to create the high bandwidth memory 2 standard and HBM1 standard. So because the chips for HBM2 are going to be finite, very limited, especially at the start, AMD have kind of like a lead time with them, which I guess is kind of fair enough considering that without AMD, the chips wouldn't have been, you know, even created. But anywho, uh, they also helped to create the interposer as well. Anyway, well not specifically interposer technology, but they help to make it more readily available and easy to manufacture. I guess that's kind of the, the best way of putting it. So Intel are going to be utilizing HMC, which stands for hybrid memory cubes, which is another um, high bandwidth memory technology-ish type of thing. Uh, but it's not managed to actually integrate that so far into its Xenon lineup. So hopefully, at least from AMD's standpoint anyway, and from the rumours, AMD have actually been approached by Facebook, which is obviously kind of a big, a big deal. And Facebook want to use this technology for semi-custom server processing for their data centres. Now, it's possible that this patent is going to be what Facebook are going to be using. Now obviously that's only speculation. No one knows what Facebook are going to be using. For all we know they're going to be using, you know, a bloody K62 derivative or something like that. We just don't know what they're going to be using. But it's most likely that they are, you know, if they're doing it for the future, going to be wanting to go with a Zen-like product. I personally would if I were Facebook, anywho. So HBM2 is actually really impressive because data servers or any of these high performance computing solutions there's a really big problem with them and that is well heat if you've ever seen any images of these server uh, server farms you'll know that the actual rooms themselves are very strictly monitored in terms of their temperature and all that jazz because they put out an enormous amount of heat so high bandwidth memory 2 reduces the power consumption which is another issue that 
they require a hell of a lot of juice to even run. So HBM2 is kind of a big deal because it increases performance but actually reduces the level of energy that's required to utilize them. Plus as well, obviously reduces uh, well the heat output as well. Now, what could be kind of cool is that because we know AMD are pushing the uh, compute functionality with the APUs because that's one of the benefits of an APU, the fact that basically you can get the CPU to farm out uh, instructions to the GPU for obviously general purpose computing. It could be kind of nice because it could be a very scalable system. Now, for AMD, they'll likely be very happy because obviously utilizing this type of server technology is very lucrative for them and it will give them a nice revenue stream. For gamers, this is probably not a massive big deal, at least for now. But it does kind of give you an indication of what is going on in this behind the scenes and possible technologies we're going to be seeing in the future. Once again, remember AMD will be giving us a version of Zen for the desktop. It probably won't be a 32, uh, you know, processor core version with like you know one terabyte of back memory and um, obviously just making up numbers at this point. But still. We will still have customer and consumer level versions of these G uh, of these APUs most likely and obviously we'll also have CPU versions of them as well which obviously will be kind of nice and hopefully give Intel a kick in the butt as well after the, I wouldn't say disappointing but I would say lackluster performance of, Z uh, of uh, Skylake. But anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know your thoughts and opinions. Sorry I've been a bit out of it this video. I'm, it's kind of late here actually. I've, I, time's just gone away from me today just with everything I've been doing in the background. So yeah, I won't make the mistake of recording quite so late this time of a technical video. It's not the best. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video anyway. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.